got a question from James who asked, at 70 years old, I don't feel as though I have five or more years left to get a second citizenship. This year, I'm gonna pay a lot of money in income tax and even a lot of money in property tax, and I'm not sure what to expect from the new administration here in the US. I think taxes could increase considerably. Is there a fast track and how should I go about getting my second citizenship? I'm gonna talk about how to get dual citizenship quickly and lower your taxes at any age right now. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson here at Nomad Capitalist, our team of three dozen people around the world, our network of global experts and yours truly help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors like James legally go where you're treated best. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. And so this is a sort of Occam's razor situation where I think the simplest answer is perhaps the best. Uh, we talk a lot about citizenship by investment as a way to quickly get second citizenship. And I'll tell you, we have had, especially in the last year, a lot more people who were in their 60s, in their 70s, who are coming to us here at Nomad Capitalist and saying, I just don't feel comfortable with the direction the country is going anymore. I've seen how little we get for our money and we want to leave. Now, James is suggesting potentially he just wants to give up his citizenship in the United States. Not everyone wants to do that. Not everyone has to do that. But I think that the idea is when you are a little bit older, uh, you want to get the fastest second passport that you can get. And so looking at a Caribbean second citizenship program uh, like St. Lucia, Dominica, Grenada, Antigua, St. Kitts, those are programs that you can look at that within anywhere from two months, if you pay a little bit extra, three, four, five months at the most, you should be able to get that passport in addition to the amount of time that it spends gathering the paperwork. So if you're in the U.S., you know, by the time you've reached 60 or 70 years old, probably takes us a couple months to gather all the paperwork and get your university uh, transcripts and get your elementary school transcripts in some cases and prepare different affidavits and explain any situations, pull your FBI report. Certainly for the U.S., like many countries, it's become a little bit uh, longer process in the last year to order documents, get them uh, with apostyle, what have you. Uh, but let's just say that you can get a passport soup to nuts in your hands in the next you know, six, eight months, something like that. Um, that gives you total flexibility. And so what I've seen is, even though that program seems so straightforward, you're gonna make a donation generally to a country, if you're single, $100,000, if you're married or have a family, $130,000. By the way, not everyone in your family, even if you're married at 70, your wife or your husband may not need the second passport, right? Uh, maybe something that you do on your own. Uh, maybe you want to bring in your children. Maybe your children want to bring in you. There's so many different ways to go about it. Potentially, you could make it a whole family affair, depending on which passport you get. Uh, but you know, the simplicity of it is you get a passport in your hands, and now you have the flexibility that if you want to move overseas as a citizen of that country, whether you want to move to Antigua, which is a tax-free country, whether you want to use the Antigua passport to get a residence permit somewhere else, whether it's Portugal, Malaysia, Panama, whatever else, you can do that. Uh, and if you want to divorce your country, you can do that. And so even a lot of wealthy people that I've worked with, I mean, we're talking in many cases nine figures of wealth. When I propose higher level programs for getting a citizenship, they say, you know what? I just like the no muss, no fuss, streamlined program, get it done in a matter of months, citizenship by investment. I think if you're an entrepreneur and you're a little bit younger, you know, it's worth looking at programs where maybe you go somewhere and you create 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 jobs and you can get a passport that way. But if I'm 70 years old, as James mentions, I don't want to mess around. I just want to get the passport now. What I would also look at in addition to that is, do I have any ancestry? I have had some older people that we have worked on any number of different uh, European citizenships. Now, those are going to take a couple of years. Now, why would I do both? I always think it's a good idea particularly if you're looking to give up your current citizenship to have a second, second citizenship. So you don't just, your second doesn't become your only. Um, particularly if it's a Caribbean citizenship, uh, you're not gonna have problems almost anywhere in the world, but just as an insurance policy, you have a second one. Uh, but the Caribbean one gets the job done quickly. Then you have the total freedom. If you wanna leave the country, you can get into more countries potentially with that new passport. You can set up residence with that new passport. But here's the conundrum that I have run into, is you'll see someone who's 70 years old. They don't qualify for any other citizenship. Uh, and so we're gonna go ahead and get St. Lucia, for example, for them. And in six months, they'll be a citizen of St. Lucia. 
And then in some cases, they want to renounce their U.S. citizenship just to get out of the huge tax obligations uh, in the U.S. entirely, get out of the filing obligations, get out of the regulations, just be able to invest their money as they please going forward. But what is the challenge? If you're a St. Lucia citizen and that's your only passport, you cannot come back to the United States to visit your grandchildren without getting a visa. You can certainly get a visa and many people do successfully, but there are some potential pitfalls if you try and get a visa and don't. And so the challenge is, you know, with someone who's 65, 70 years old, the process of waiting potentially a couple years to get European citizenship by descent or waiting, you know, six years, for example, through the Portugal Golden Visa Program to get that second passport that allows you to go back to the U.S., to Canada, to Australia and to New Zealand without a visa. Uh, four countries that are probably some of the toughest countries to get visas to. Not that if you have money, you should have a hard time, but it could just be a hassle. Um, and, you know, so, you know, being 70 and waiting until you're 73, 76, you know, certainly that can be an issue. And so the process is one of, you know, what do we need a second passport for? Um, okay, I'm, I'm older. Uh, I have a lot of money. I'm paying a lot of tax. Let me get the second passport as an insurance policy. Absolutely. Let's not waste time. Let's get, up, let's get our citizenship by investment. From there, it might be a matter of simply setting up the residence. As I said, take your Antigua or St. Lucia passport and go to the country that's tax friendly that you want to live in and get your residence program uh, set up under that new passport. So within, let's say, a year, you've got a new passport and a place to live. And then you can make the decision, do I want to keep my current citizenship, in James's case, the U.S., or not. And if you decide not to, your entire life as this new citizen is already created, the U.S. could just be pushed away and we can do all the proper tax planning and we can do everything that comes with that to make sure that, you know, you can successfully leave the U.S. Um, or you can just live in that tax-friendly country, potentially lower your taxes, depends on if you have income, if you have dividends, you know, what kind of stocks you're invested in, uh, if you're in cryptocurrency. Obviously, the U.S. does follow its citizens worldwide on taxation. However, sometimes, depending on what kind of investments you have, you know, James mentions property tax in the U.S., you either need to sell those U.S. investments or it might not make a huge difference, you know, if you were to expatriate from the U.S., right? If you own a lot of U.S. rental property, you know, you probably want to sell that if the goal is to expatriate, reinvest that in other places where you can get a higher return with lower taxation and just get away from the U.S. doesn't make a lot of sense to me to expatriate in many cases and then keep lots and lots and lots of U.S. income producing assets that require you to keep paying tax to the U.S. Uh, and so, you know, those are the things uh, that I look at is I think, you know, from a human perspective, are your grandchildren, are your children, are they coming with you? I've had some cases where people, you know, bring their parents or the parents bring their kids. They make it a whole family affair. Everyone moves to Portugal. And they get a lot better tax treatment where the older person is planning on renouncing. Uh, but if the issue is my, my kids and my grandkids have never left the U.S. and they don't want to leave the U.S., then you've got a decision to make. Are you willing to and are they willing to, you know, fly to meet you somewhere else if in the event that you don't want to try and get a visa because you're working on another passport or, uh, you know, they're just not willing to come? I mean, how would you deal with potentially not being able to see those people? That's a question that comes up you know, that age. Um, are you willing to sell properties that maybe you've held for a long time? I mean, James is talking about $100,000 in property tax. That might be quite a rental property portfolio and it might have been built up over the years. Are you going to be emotional about selling that? Because again, you know, if you are, then the second passport is a great insurance policy, but it may not give you all the, the oomph that you want. You're not just going to expatriate from the U.S. on your second passport and not pay on rental property sitting in Tennessee anymore. And so for me, the fast track is exactly as I laid out. Citizenship by investment, streamline process, gather the documents, have someone like Nomad Capitalist helps you so you're not you know, sitting around uh, spending you know, a whole year gathering those documents and it happens quickly and you get the passport quickly. Be working on your residence permit. Be starting to move money overseas. Be preparing yourself to expatriate if that's your goal and then making a decision. But with that, making the human decisions of how that's gonna work with your family. I've said for a long time, my family comes and visits me. I don't have a huge extended family, uh, but my family has come and has seen me. Um, and if I had family who wanted to come and see me but couldn't afford it, uh, you could pay to do that. With all the money you're saving, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in taxes, that'll, that'll buy a lot of plane tickets. And you can potentially inspire your family who's sitting in the U.S. to come and 
and see parts of the world they might have never have done. I'm, I'm really proud that I've had family members who probably wouldn't have gone to Mexico City or Tbilisi if I hadn't spent a lot of time there and convinced them it was safe. So I think there's a lot of opportunities there. But the fast track is just make the donation. I wouldn't be fooling around with real estate. I wouldn't be fooling around with business investments. The one exception perhaps is I would look at St. Lucia's bond investment program. If I'm older and I have lots of money in cash or in US treasuries or something like that, there might even be a, a tax planning benefit if you were to expatriate of moving some US assets that are making nothing into St. Lucia bonds, which are making nothing. So depending on whether you have a large cash position or whether you have more of an opportunity cost issue, I would look at a donation in one of the five countries in the Caribbean, or I would look at St. Lucia's bond program, set the rest of my life up, and then make a decision from there. Your life will change. Your feelings will change when you get the passport in your hands and you will see uh, exactly what, what, how you feel then, and you can make decisions from there. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you wanna lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.